Hi everyone, my name is Lu. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to MediaPipe, a new sub-project in the Tensor project. MediaPipe provides solutions to make on-device machine learning customizable for your specific needs so that every mobile and web developer can create their own smart application powered by ML. So, what is on-device machine learning? On-device machine learning is a subfield of machine learning that develops, builds, and deploys ML on edge devices. When talking about ML, many people may have an impression that it's about ML models run on the server side using powerful GPUs or TPUs. However, edge devices like smartphones or IoT devices have become very important platforms, and there has been a global explosion in on-device ML. But why is it important to run machine learning on edge devices? There are several reasons. First, low latency. Fast on-device ML inference unblocks new use cases, such as video object tracking in real time. There is no round trip to the server and no wait for result to come back. The second reason is offline availability. You can use the feature even when there is no internet connection. The third reason is protecting user privacy. With on-device ML, you don't need to send sensitive user data to the server for processing. And thanks to on-device ML, a lot of new features have become possible. Let me show you some examples. Background blur and replace is a very attractive feature in Google Meet that helps people focus on the meeting itself. It leverages media pipe and runs an efficient on-device segmentation model via the real-time in-browser ML pipeline. Another popular task in ML is to see and detect movements of human, hands, and objects. Google Nest leverages MediaPipe to perform real-time detection in applications such as package deliveries alert, motion detection, and hand gesture control. One more example is a virtual try-on feature on YouTube. Users can try different lipstick colors using augmented reality in the app. MediaPipe's face mesh pipeline, which recognizes a user's lips in real time and changes the color, powers this feature. Many developers are interested in utilizing ML for their applications, but creating and productionizing on-device ML solutions is not yet trivial. At a high level, a production-ready ML solution is an integration of one or more on-device models and the ML pipeline. Model is at the core of an on-device ML solution. It needs to be tailored to your specific use case while being small and efficient enough to meet various on-device constraints on computation, memory, power, storage, etc. ML pipelines, on the other hand, streamlines the process from raw inputs to output results, which usually involves domain-specific processing, like vision, NLP, and audio, end-to-end -end pipeline acceleration across CPU, GPU, HTPU, and DSP, cross-platform deployment to Android, iOS, web, and bare metal. Both the model and ML pipeline require deep ML and domain knowledge and great engineering effort to design, build, and optimize. Due to all this complexity, many developers find it very difficult to use ML. So that's why the MediaPipe team decided to reinvent how AI is developed and deployed and make it possible for everyone to leverage ML in their own on-device applications. We abstract all the complexity when building ML pipelines into MediaPipe tasks while providing you the flexibility to easily create your own model through MediaPipe Model Maker. With MediaPipe, you will find many highly optimized and customizable solutions tailored for common ML tasks across test, vision, audio, and more. Developing on-device ML becomes much easier than ever by just calling our simple-to-use local API and even using local GUI tools in the near future.
At this point, you might be wondering, where do I get started? MediaPipe Task and Model Maker evolved from TensorFlow Lite Task Library and Model Maker, the libraries to create and deploy single models. Powered by MediaPipe Framework, a framework to author and execute end-to-end -end solution pipelines, we can now support many more complex but useful solutions. For example, you will be able to recognize hand gesture from images or video streams using an easy-to-use API. Some preview solutions will be available soon on metapipe.dev, and we're working hard to enable more for you. Join our email list, metapipe-solutions-announce, to keep yourself up to date to our latest progress. Now, let's dive into a real object detection example. I'll show you how to get started with the existing task library and model maker API. The upcoming media pipe tasks and model maker libraries will have a very similar user journey. Assume you want your app to detect general objects like cats or dogs. As a new user, the simplest way to get started is to download a portrait model from task library's model collection on TensorFlow Hub. There are many object detection models developed for different user needs available on TensorFlow Hub. In this example, we choose Efficient Dead Light, the state-of-the-art detection model developed for on-device use cases. It is trained on the COCO dataset and can recognize 80 types of different objects like dog, cat, keyboard, television, and more. The model takes an image as the input and then returns a list of objects that it recognizes together with the location of the objects in the image. For example, the model can tell there is a dog and a cat in this image and where they are. Once you have downloaded your model, you can use Task Library to integrate the model into your apps. First, you will need to add Task Library to your application. There are Android, iOS, and Python libraries that you can choose from depending on your target platform. Let me first show you how to integrate the object detection model to your Python application using the Task Library Python API. You can start it by importing the vision module from Task Library. Then, initialize an object detector with the TensorFlow Line model that you just downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. Now, you need to prepare a tensor image to fit the input image to the object detector. You can load an image directly from a file using the fromImage function. And then call the detect function with the tensor image to detect objects from the image. The detect function gives you a list of detection results, each representing an object that is found from the image. In each detection result, you'll find the object name the confidence score, and the bounding box indicating the object location. And it's that simple. In just five lines of code, your Python application can now detect 80 different types of objects. Task Library supports many different platforms, including Android and iOS smartphones. Integrating a pre-trained model to a smartphone application is just as easy as what I just showed you with a Python application. For example, there is a column code you need to write to integrate the object detection model into an Android app. You start by creating an object detector with a model you downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. Then you create a tensor image object from the Android bitmap that contains the image you want to recognize. And finally, you call the detect method with a tensor image object and get back the list of detected objects similar to what you get from the Python API. Here's a demo of using Task Library in an Android app. The model can detect general objects such as mouse, keyboard, or water bottle. You can clone the demo app from GitHub and try it out by yourself. As I showed you earlier, Task Library allows you to add ML capabilities into your app in just a few lines of code by using the provided portraying models. However, there are many times that you may want to do something that is not supported by the portraying models. That's when you need to train a custom model. 
Model Maker is an easy to use tool for those cases. Let me give you an example. A portraying object detection model can recognize 80 different types of objects, but it can't recognize the Android figuring that I have. If I want to build an app to recognize this Android figurings, then I will need to train a custom model. Let's see how to do it using Model Maker and Test Library. There are three steps to do so. First, collect and label the training data. Then, train a custom object detection model using Model Maker. And finally, deploy the model using Test Library just like what I showed you earlier with the portraying model. As a first step, you start with taking a lot of photos containing the objects that you want to detect. You can start with a dozen images for each type of the object and train a prototype model. But to get a production quality model, you should aim for having more than 100 images for each type of object. Next, use an image labeling tool to label the object that you want to detect in the image. I prefer a tool called Label Image. It's an open source tool that you can download from GitHub. Once you've finished labeling your images, you can export the label data to start training the model. To train a machine learning model, you will need a powerful computer. My recommendation is to use Google Colab, which is a web-based tool to run Python programs. It offers a free GPU so you can train custom machine learning models faster. Of course, you can also use your laptop and desktop to train models if you want. You can start by installing Model Maker on Google Colab or on your computer using pip. Just run pip install tflight model maker. And next is a Python code to train a custom model using model maker. You start with choosing model spec or model architecture for your custom model. Here we use efficient that light zero. The same architecture with a perturing model that downloaded from TensorFlow Hub earlier. Then you load your data set using the object detector data loader. And then you start training your model. After training the model, we use a test data set which the model hasn't seen before to evaluate the model accuracy. And finally, you export the model to deploy on edge devices. Now, as you have finished training the custom model, let's switch to the Android app to deploy it. Deploying the custom model is very easy. You can reuse the code in the demo app and just replace the portraying model with your custom model. Here's the custom model in action. You can see that instead of detecting general objects, the app now can detect the Android figurines. We're working hard on improving Model Maker. In the coming months, we'll add more use cases to Model Maker. You will soon be able to train a custom model to recognize different hand gestures, a very useful ML task that can power many on-device applications. For example, if you want to recognize gesture and convert them to emoji, you can start with taking photos of hand gesture corresponding to each types of emoji you want to detect. Then you use Model Maker to train a custom model to recognize those hand gestures and use Task Library to deploy the custom model on your Android, iOS, web, or Python apps. That was all the content for today. Let's recap what we've talked about. I introduced you how to create on-device ML solutions with Metapipe. To get started, you can first explore our pre-built solutions in Metapipe tasks and deploy the solution in a few lines of code. If the pre-built solutions don't meet your specific needs, you can customize your own solutions with Metapipe Model Maker and then deploy the train model using Metapipe tasks. We're working hard on merging task library with Metapipe tasks making it a full-fledged solution for deploying custom on-device ML. Follow us on mediapipe.dev or join mediapipe-solutions-announce for the latest updates. Stay tuned.